to lead the Liberal Party and therefore to be Prime Minister of Australia. I'm joined now on the Lords of Parliament House by the Assistant Treasurer Josh Frydenberg. Josh, good morning to you. Nice to be with you, Michael. We'll get to those uh, figures in a moment, but first I believe you come straight from a, a workout session at the gym <laughs> with the Prime Minister this morning. Explain to us his state of mind. Look, I think he's fit and he's confident. I'm pretty convinced that uh, he will maintain uh, the strong support of the majority of his parliamentary colleagues and this spill motion will be defeated today as it should be. What is a good result for him? How, how big a margin uh, will uh, he take as, as vindication today? Look, I'll leave that to the commentators to speculate. Um, clearly, uh, a win's a win. And uh, hopefully, as a party, we can put the last two weeks of destabilisation and disunity behind us. A win's not a win, though. If it's 60-40 or 55-45, even arguably 70-30, that spells trouble for the Prime Minister down the track. Well, Michael, something tells me that uh, whatever the number is, uh, the media will continue uh, to, uh, you know, hypothesise as to what is around the corner. Surely um, we can put this behind us. Yes, there are some very legitimate concerns raised by my colleagues. I think one of the things that has been characteristic of these leadership discussions is that we have conducted in a very civil way. I think, you know, all my colleagues understand at the end of the day we are Liberals. Uh, we're Liberals and our political opponents are the Labor Party. This is giving a free kick to the Labor Party and therefore we should put an end to it as quick as possible. Would you like to see Malcolm Turnbull formally declare his uh, candidacy for leader before this party room meeting? Look, that's a question for Malcolm Turnbull. You'd have to ask. He's a valued colleague of mine. He's an important cabinet minister. He's done a terrific job. But as for his declarations, that's really a matter for him. What do you uh, read into these numbers? I mean, you're saying that and uh, where, where the government's going. Voters are taking a starkly different view of the Prime Minister, a 24% approval rating. How can any Prime Minister recover from that? Well, two points. Firstly, these, these polls are no surprise to me. I mean, we have not covered ourselves in glory over the last couple of weeks. And that's largely the Prime Minister's doing? No, it's largely the fact that all my colleagues can take joint responsibility for the happenings over the last two weeks. We are a team and we've shown anything but over the last couple of weeks. So I'm not surprised by these polls. The second point, though, Michael, is we have been here before. If you go back to John Howard's term as Prime Minister uh, in 2001, uh, he had to coalition, you know, uh, two party preferred votes were in the low 40s. His personal approval ratings were in the low, in, in the 20s, as Tony Abbott's are now. And he came back just months later in November to win a 16 seat majority. It has been done, it can be done, but the Prime Minister deserves clear air to, you know, to take the country forward. Yeah, but see, you make that argument, as various other Liberal MPs have done, but back in 2001, John Howard took drastic steps. He, he cut the uh, indexation of, of the fuel sure, excise. Sure. He made wider changes. And, and the Prime Minister, what's he done? He had that disastrous $20 proposal to cut the Medicare rebate before Christmas, and he knighted Prince Philip. Look, I'm not going to beat around the bush with you here, Michael. We have made some mistakes, and a number of our budget proposals were unpopular. And I think what we failed to do was to explain what the problem is before we provided the Australian people with the solution. Take, for example, the Medicare co-payment. Susan Lee is now going back to key stakeholders like the AMA and talking about those issues together with the crossbenchers, because clearly we can't get all our legislation through the Senate as we wish. OK, would you like to see that $7 co-payment ditched? Oh. As one of the changes the Prime Minister may make if he survives today. I'm not the Health Minister, I'm not in Cabinet, so I'll leave that to Susan Lee, the Prime Minister, and her fellow Cabinet colleagues. How strong do you believe the numbers will be, given that this is a secret ballot, and yep. uh, as the Prime Minister has argued, uh, all 40, 35 members of the executive, including yourself, mm -hmm. uh, are pledged by convention to support him. Do you think that may be a different story once those <laughs> bits of paper and stubby pencils are handed out inside the building today? Well, I think it's a credit to the Liberal Party and to the Prime Minister that we're having a secret ballot, because clearly if it wasn't a secret ballot, it'd be harder for people to, to vote against their Prime Minister. So I think this is you know, a very positive development uh, and I think uh, he will retain the strong support. I'm not going to speculate as to what those numbers are but I think the, the spill motion will be defeated Michael. There's scope for considerable betrayal uh, there under a secret <laughs> ballot. I mean you, you know how politics works. I think there'll be a few people looking over the shoulders of their colleagues That's no doubt. That's right because it's not exactly a secret ballot you sit side <laughs> by side don't you? So. We, we do and it's all uh, packed in like sardines but uh, yeah, I've never been through one of these processes before. We've all been through our own pre-selections and the number counting that's involved in that. But 
this will be a unique experience. Like talking to my colleagues, Michael, who have been through this process before, they say it's not a very uh, nice morning to spend with your colleagues. No, and it's not a nice morning for a lot of MPs who are distinctly unimpressed the Prime Minister has brought forward this meeting to today. Was, was that another dodgy captain's call? As, Absolutely uh, not. As Malcolm I, I don't, Turnbull describes I don't know why people are hyperventilating about this. I mean, the point is, uh, we need to put this issue behind us. If we had waited to Tuesday, then it would have meant another day of interviews out on the grass in front of Parliament House talking about ourselves. The Labor Party would have had a field day at our expense in Parliament. That's not in the best interest of the government, of the Liberal Party or indeed the country. So why wouldn't you, as Julie Bishop herself said yesterday, deal with this issue as soon as possible? OK, it's being dealt with in just under two hours' time. So Josh Schwartenberg, you're absolutely confident Tony Abbott will prevail this morning. I'm very confident and that's because Tony Abbott both has the record of achievement as well as the plan for the future. And secondly, are you absolutely confident as the Prime Minister says that uh, the rejection of this bill motion will be a vote of confidence in him and this issue will go away? I am and I really hope that my colleagues unite after today's vote and focus on our real opponents, the Labor Party. If it goes the other way, could you see yourself working under Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull? Look, I'm not going to get into that realm of possibility because I'm pretty confident that the spill motion will be defeated today as it should be. OK, well, we'll let you prepare for that big meeting. Josh Frydenberg, Assistant Treasurer, thank you very much for your time this morning. Thanks, Michael. Nice to be with you. Josh Frydenberg there, Virginia, back to you in the studio.